the $470 million closed-circuit television CCTV cameras, equivalent to $169.2 billion naira, are about the single most expensive capital projects on the streets of the Nigerian capital, Abuja, and the commercial city of Lagos in the southwest. Installed between 2011 and 2012, these technology-driven devices that are effectively used in cities and towns in countries around the world have unfortunately never worked in Nigeria after the project was supposedly completed and handed over to the federal government in June 2013. The 2,000 CCTV cameras on the streets of Abuja and Lagos were to help in security surveillance for the prevention and fight against crime and criminality as part of the National Public Security Communications System, MPSCS. The Abuja and Lagos projects were the pilot scheme of the security system that was designed to be replicated and expanded in operational scope to cover the other 35 states of the Federation if only it was a success in the two cities. The idea of the National Public Security Communication System project, uh, which most Nigerians see more as CCTV cameras, was conceived by the President Goodluck Jonathan-led administration after the nation's capital Abuja was bombed for the very first time on October 1, 2010 by suspected members of the Movement for the Emancipation of the Niger Delta meant. And today, with the challenge of kidnapping, armed robbery, and banditry, the country under President Muhammadu Buhari is on the threshold of another multi billion dollar investment in CCTV cameras on the highways. Let me be very clear about our firm resolve to change the security architecture of Nigeria. It is one of top priorities for this government. I will be issuing directives to the appropriate federal authorities to speedily approve licensing for states requesting the use of drones to monitor forests and other criminal hideouts. We also intend to install CCTVs on highways and other strategic locations so that activities in some of these hidden places can be exposed, more effectively monitored, and open to actionable review. To resolving security challenges in Nigeria, uh, all the services are using one form of technology or the other in order to ensure that our country is secured. So technology will continue to play a role, and we are also looking at other areas of technology that are not currently in use uh, to ensure that uh, we put together all that is required. This is Straight Talk and I am TV Tiav in Abuja. And we welcome all our viewers in Nigeria and around the world to the program. You can also join me on the conversation here on my online platforms on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram and LinkedIn with all the handles on the website of our partners, MediaDimensions.life, the Media Services Resource Center. I was there as a president for some time. Security challenges were there with me. I also inherited some, everybody struggled, but it is getting worse every day. And we cannot continue to use the same old method. As security operatives, the police, the SSS, the armed forces, who must deploy technology. And I believe that if the federal government will need to even set up a special unit, just like we set up EFCC and ICPC to handle specific issues of corruption, so that they will know that their total responsibility is to manage this kidnapping and this because terrorist attacks on people coming to the road or going to the farms to kill people. We can't continue that way. It's not just possible. Because uh, you can't even talk about managing the economy of this country if people are not safe. The economy is for the people. People must be alive. 
to enjoy a growing economy. People must be alive to enjoy infrastructure. Even if you tie all the roads in the country and people cannot move about, then the roads become meaningless. So I think the issue of security must be approached from a different dimension. We cannot continue the old way. It is really getting out of hand. Former President Goodluck Jonathan advising the President Muhammad Buhari led administration after his condolence visit to the leader of the Pan Yoruba Social Cultural Organization, the Afeni Fere Ruben Fasoranti in Ondo State, Southwest Nigeria. Fasoranti had on July 12, 2019, lost his 58 year old daughter, Funke Olakuni, between Kajola and Ore towns along the Onde Ore Road. In the same deadly incident, seven other persons were also kidnapped. The reactions that followed got the presidency to agree, perhaps for the very first time, to rethink the country's security architecture, especially after the open letter written by former president Olujagun Obasanjo. The letter, which was published three days after Funke Fasoranti Olakuni was killed, warned against, quote, abandoning Nigeria into the hands of criminals, end of quote. It did raise alarm that the country was, quote, dangerously reaching a tipping point where it may no longer be possible to hold danger at bay, end of quote. In clear reference to genuine threats to the continuous existence of Nigeria, as one united and indissoluble nation. The first indication that the administration of President Buhari would eventually adopt technology in redesigning the country's security architecture and intelligence gathering mechanism, however, came after the National Economic Council NEC meeting of July 20, 2019. It was indeed uncommon, very strange, and unexpected that such recommendation would come from these quarters in view of the statutory mandate of the council. But then, yes, it was the inaugural meeting of the National Economic Council for the 2019-2023 session. Established under the third schedule of the 1999 constitution as amended, the council has, quote, power to advise the president concerning the economic affairs of the federation, and in particular, on measures necessary for the coordination of the economic planning efforts or economic programs of the various governments of the Federation, end of quote. Chaired by the country's vice president, the statutory members of the council include governors of the 36 states of the Federation and the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, the CBN. However, in view of its work, the council now has the ministers of finance, budget, and national planning, agriculture and rural development, amongst others who are invited from time to time to brief and engage with the members, like it was the turn of the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, on the fateful day. The general security situation in the country as we observe and the council observe is such that the situation is being uh, stabilized now as against um, some months back. Part of the strategy to deal with um, security situation and to tame crime, we said as I presented it, is to bring back the safer city concept where all our major cities are fixed with CCTVs. The project has been going on, but now we have resuscitated uh, the, the, the program. And um, we started with FCT. Within our command and control office, we are able to um, put some cameras at strategic places in FCT. The Inspector General of Police on the resolution of the National Economic Council in June 2019. Instructively, 
what should be the control or monitoring room of the 1,000 CCTV cameras installed in Abuja, the nation's capital, is reportedly located within the National Police uh, Force Headquarters Complex in Asokoro District. We have requested for the permission of the Office of the Inspector General of Police since September 26, 2016 to visit the CCTV cameras monitoring room in the force headquarters, but till date, this has not been obliged. Since 2014 that we have followed the failed CCTV cameras project, no survey of former government official involved with the contract or those connected to it, including ministries, uh, departments, and agencies, like the Ministry of Interior, uh, that is uh, now responsible for police affairs, the Nigerian Communications Satellite Company, NICOMSAT, and the Federal Capital Territory Administration, the FCTA, that were to be the beneficiaries, are willing to talk about it. Only the Nigerian consultant to the project, engineer Tima Sanu Ahmed Rafai, who was the managing director of the Nigerian Communications Satellite Company, NICOMSAT, at the time the CCTV cameras contract was executed, agreed in 2016 to volunteer information on the highly controversial project. Ahmed Rafai was allegedly kicked out of office on the account of the strange but powerful forces within and outside the government that were battling at that time to outdo each other over their very suspicious interest in the project. So the, the, the whole essence of the project at that time was to combat the rise in, in, in the wave of crime across the entire country. And it's a modern multimedia communication network that, as at the time it was convinced, it was going to be superior to any other existing network in Nigeria. It's a CDMA Rev A, upgradable to Rev B. Communication capacities for the entire gamut of the national security systems, meaning for the police, for the SSS, for the military, for civil defense, for immigration, you know, for, I mean, immigration, for customs, you know, and all the other related, you know, security agencies, Nigerian defense, uh, Nigerian uh, uh, intelligence uh, agencies, agency, you know, and, you know, the like. The project is, is, is comprised of five components. First one is this global open trunking architectural uh, network, which was to provide multimedia communication among the, the police the uh, formations and all the security agencies, free of charge, 24-7. They're not going to pay for it. <laughs> because the, the communication tool for the police is supposed to be part of their tool. It's part of the, of the tool they work with. They're not going to pay for it. They don't have to buy MTN and the rest and so all those things from their, you know, from, the, from, 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 from their pocket, mm -hmm. you know, you know. So it was supposed to, you know, you know, you know, provide a, a free communications, uh, you know, system for the, 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 the entire security system. The second issue is the emergency response uh, communication system, you know, which was supposed to provide, you know, you know emergency communications in the event of uh, maybe fire, in the event of accident. In the event of even sickness, you know, pregnancy, the pregnant woman and the in ambulance services is, is there. The third one is um, the video conferencing system. As part of this uh, network, every uh, state police headquarters is completely, you know, uh, you know, furnished with a video conferencing system. So the management of the entire, you know, you know, Command. police, uh, commands can 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 can, can communicate real time. Yeah over a video conference to, you know, together with other security you know, agencies. We also have um, the e-policing system, you know, whereby the uh, police uh, data and the entire police operation is made online, you know, and, and, and captured you know, you know, in a comprehensive database. You know, which is part. You know, some of those, some of these things now they're doing it in piecemeal. Where the, you know you have uh, embedded the ID card and the, you know e um, pension scheme. You know, everything was already provided for. You know, in this in this project, 
you know so these are you know the various components of the and of course we have the surveillance the camera you know the surveillance uh, system you know these are the various components of the of the of the, of the project which will have put Nigerian police you know in a par with any so this was what the project was all about so the CCTV you are seeing it is less than eight percent or about eight percent of the total project so the country started with Abuja and, and Lagos as a pilot and it was supposed to be extended to every 36 states. For the CCTV alone, the, the CCTV has capacity to record everything that happens within um, two, three hundred meter square radius of the, of the camera and stored for six months or for one year. You know, and all the crisis uh, red spots in this country were supposed to be, to be covered. Apart from this, it also, the principal main component of the project is what we call the GOTA, Global Open Trunking Architectural Communication System, which was supposed to replace the radio Motorola in you know, a handheld um, walkie-talkie that the police <laughs> up to now they are using. That is, the Inspector General of Police can talk to the entire police force from his office by just pressing the button. The commissioner of, of police in the state can talk to the entire police, particularly in the in the in the in the, in the event of emergency. emergency. If this system and network is working, every policeman is going to carry a phone, a quota phone, yeah. and there is an emergency intra communication that in the event of any any crisis, they just press it. That's all. Then before you know, it, there's an alert mm -hmm. within you know 100 to 300 kilometer radius, and every you know you know you know available. Forces, including the fire, fire, firefighters, you know, they are, they are all part of the network. So they will be mobilized to site. Um, several years after the project was done and uncompleted, even at the stage they said they've done, finished it, and to see what is uh, the skeleton of what has what they have put in place or what the aftermath of what they have put in place. Is, I think it's a very big shame on our nation and a very big shame for us that have lived outside this country and see how CCTV works and see what they've done. I think it's a great, great shame. And even making police work and policing very difficult. And that is what we are, after they put that thing in place, they never bothered whether that thing will work. I think that thing just worked maybe for, if it worked up to six months in the various parts and as we have seen it in our course of tour around the city that most of these things have been hacked down, mowed down by vehicle, hacked down by people who are, uh, you know, who are cutting them to use in making native uh, spoons and plates here and there and pots. So it's, it's a big, a big a slap to think that in the 21st century when Nigeria is conf being confronted with different security challenges here and there, people being hijacked from schools, People being taken away, you know, from their homes, killing here and there. And, you know, we had attacks at EMAB, if you forget, if you remember. And there are supposed to be some cameras on that road and nothing happened till tomorrow. What is even touching my own heart and worrying me so much is that our press have gone to sleep. We need to ask questions. Who did this wickedness to Nigeria? Who are those behind it? You know, who are those behind it? We need to ask questions because this is, this is really shameful. We have seen CCTV work in other land, and even our West African uh, neighbors here, even in South Africa. We, cannot, we, we should not even be comparing ourselves with South Africa. You know, because there you throw stone, they are going to get you. And that is the way the world is going. But we are all aware that if they have been installed, they are not working. We are not denying that fact. So, Effort will be made to get them functional. But you see, we don't allow challenges to bring down our effort in trying to make crime prevention and control an issue. Challenges will never finish, but they are all surmountable. So if CCT camera is not working, then we work with what we have. Just like I always say, Various technical aids are required in investigation cases nowadays.
because on most cases, uh, uh, so if we cannot do e-policing, uh, that is why we said, I said we have maintained high visibility. That is why we are always on patrol. That is why we identify black spots and uh, areas where hoodlums are hibernating and conduct raids and so forth. So until the issue of CCTV camera is improved, then we have a duty. We still have a duty to continue to work manually and we are doing so. There we have the former commissioner of police in the Federal Capital Territory, Alkali Usman, who had just been promoted to the rank of Assistant Inspector General of Police when he was speaking on the controversial CCTV cameras project in 2016. He is today in the management team of the Nigeria Police Force as the force secretary at the force headquarters. One thing is very clear. If the $470 million National Public Security Communication System project was successful, the Nigerian government will not be contemplating another investment in CCTV cameras in any part of the country as a replication of the pilot scheme across the Federation would have perhaps long been completed. What is more worrisome, however, is the failure lack of will, or better put, the refusal of the administration of President Muhammad Buhari since 2015 to hold those who are responsible for the failure of the project accountable, especially that the cyber security pilot project was one of the very best decisions taken by the Nigerian government in recent times. It is on record that Nigeria's House of Representatives has launched public probes into the National Public Security Communication System project on three consecutive uh, occasions since uh, 2011. Ten members of one of the probe panels were allegedly sponsored by the contractor ZTE Corporation on a visit to China in April 2012 where a similar project was supposedly executed by the same company and reports say that was the end of that particular probe. Interestingly, only the House investigation in 2016 produced a report on the failed project. The project, the report uh, which was laid before the House on January 26, 2017, indicted former ministers and the permanent secretary who served in the then Minister of Police Affairs between 2010 and 2014 where the project was executed. The former ministers indicted are Adamu Waziri, Navy Captain Kaleb Olubolade, retired, and Jejeli Adesanya, and the former super permanent secretary of the uh, former Ministry of Police Affairs, Dr. James Obeibu. This is just as we have made frantic efforts over the years to get on this program, the former Minister of Communications, Omobola Johnson, who along with the then super permanent secretary in the Ministry of Police Affairs, Dr. James Obebu, has been directly accused of having deliberately worked against the successful takeoff of the National Public Security Communication System project while in office. It is also important for the former Minister of Finance, Olushego Naganga, who was in office when the federal government awarded a contract for the project to also speak up about what he knows. $470 million was paid, yes, for the project, fully. No money was provided for operations, no fuel. Fuel. That's what <laughs> shut down the project. Yeah. So it's as simple as, as that. Like I told you, the 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 network consists of about six hundred and ninety-six BTS. The towers of these telecommunication towers nationwide. And this it, each one is powered as you know by generators. Yes. So, 
the MSC will have two switching, uh, uh, switching centers. One here, the core network here in, uh, in Abuja and one in Lagos. Then three switching centers across the country. They're all powered by generators. So when the contractor finished their job in 2012, sometimes I think December, no one was provided for the day-to-day -day fueling, day-to-day -day provision of security of all the all our installations you know, nationwide and other, you know, overhead, daily overhead. It was not it was supposed to be provided from the police reform fund. So we made all efforts were made. At some point in time, government approved some monies, you know, <laughs> at the 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 last pump sec in the police affairs, sat on it. Mr. James Obebe you can come to AIT and defend himself. <laughs> he sat on it, and they have some other priorities. And this is the catastrophe you know we face in this country. Thank you.